Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on deployment and using parameters in SQL Server integration services. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin with an introduction explaining about the two types of deployment in SSIS, package and project, and introducing our example package. We'll then go on to look at deploying projects, so we'll show how to create a catalogue in SSMS, how to deploy a project, and how to then execute a package that you've deployed. Finally, we'll look at parameters, so I'll show how to create and use parameters and how to group them together into things called environments. So let's get started. Just before we begin to have a look at what parameters in deployment means, can I just explain the two different ways in which you can deploy a project or packages in SSIS? If you right click on a project shown in bold type in Solution Explorer, you can see that you've got the option to convert it to something called a package deployment model. Now this is the only way of deploying which was available to you up to and including SSIS 2008 release 2. But from 2012 onwards, Microsoft have introduced a project deployment model, which is so much superior in every respect that you'd be mad not to use it. Now the only reason I mention this is to emphasize that if you're watching this tutorial video, and you're using a version of SSIS up to and including 2008 release 2, you can pretty much stop watching and disregard the video because it won't work for you. So we're using the project deployment model, which is the default from versions of 2012 onwards. And now I've got that on my chest, let's have a look at the example we're going to do. Here's the example we're going to use for this tutorial. It's slightly more complicated than you might expect because I want to be able to introduce parameters later on. I've got a table of finalists. That won't surprise anyone who's been watching the series of videos from the X Factor reality series. There's 109 of them, I think. And what I want to be able to do is to interrogate the database to say, show me all the finalists whose finishing position was less than or equal to a given number, so he finished here in the first, second or third place, and whose names contain B. And I could most easily do that using SQL and I wouldn't have to touch integration services. But that wouldn't be any fun and certainly wouldn't teach us about deployment or parameters. So instead I've set up a package to do pretty much the same thing. And what I'll do is just explain how it works. There's two variables. One is the maximum position. I'm going to say three. So I'm going to show all the finalists who got first, second or third position. And I want their name to contain the letter B. I could type in any text I like there. The first thing the package will do is run an execute SQL task. And what this will do is, I'll just go to expressions, the SQL statement has been set to be an expression. And the expression is select finalist name from table finalist where the finishing position is less than or equal to the value of the variable I've typed in, which was 3, converted to a two-character string, and the finalist name is like, and then I've got percent followed by the letters I've typed in and another percent to use a wildcard. And if I evaluate the expression, it's much easier to see what it's going to do. It's going to run this SQL script, select all the finalists, where the finishing position is less than or equal to the number I've entered, and the finalist name contains the text I've entered. So far, so good. The data is saved in a result set, and I've said that the first and only result set, number zero, is going to be stored in a variable called chosen finalists. And you can see the chosen finalists defined here as an object variable, and will basically hold a, an array of all the finalists who have been selected. If you want to find out more about this, refer to the earlier tutorial on looping over ADO rows. After running my execute SQL task, what I then do is loop over the rows in this chosen finalist object variable. So if I double click on that, you can see it's a for each ADO enumerator, so it's looping over rows, and I've chosen the object variable to be chosen finalists. I've set some variable mappings. I'm only selecting one thing, which is a finalist name, so the first and only thing returned from that um, selection is going to be stored in the variable called finalist name. So the net result of this will be this loop will loop over all the finalists returned and read the name of the finalist into a variable called finalist name. 
I then set up an expression task within the loop to set a string variable called finalist list to be what it used to be, and then I'm adding on the name of the fi new finalist I've just discovered. This rather complicated expression in the middle is just ensuring that I add on a carriage return, which is backslash n, for every finalist apart from the first one. And if I evaluate that expression, it won't actually give me anything because currently these variables are blank. So that's my expression. The net result of running this loop will be that I'll have an accumulated string of text in the finalist variable. So all I then need to do is display it. And I can do that with this script task. I pass in the name of the finalist variable and in my script, I just display a message which says, lists out the name or the value of that variable. So that's what my package is doing. And what I'm going to do now is to run it to show it in action. And you can see there it's listing out all the finalists who got first, second or third position and who have a B in their name. What we'll now do is look at deployment using this um, package and then go on to look at parameters. The first thing you need to be able to do before you can use the default project deployment model in SSIS 2012 onwards is to create something called a catalog. So I'm in SQL Server Management Studio. There's my X Factor database I've been using all this time and I haven't got any catalogs. So what I'll do is right click and choose to create a catalog. And this is probably something you'll only ever do once. It automatically enables CLI integration, which is good. Um, and what I'm going to do is to automatically is to tick that box, which will automatically run a store procedure to tidy up settings when SQL Server first begins. To be honest, I'm not absolutely certain what that does, but it seemed a good idea and was recommended on the internet. I'm going to type in a password. It's test if you want to hack into this, and then choose OK. What I will be able to do is later to delete the catalog, even if I don't know the password. And you can see now that I haven't got any projects within that catalog, but I'm going to remedy that now by having a look at how you can deploy projects to that catalog. What I'm now going to do is show how to deploy a project to the new shiny new catalog I've just created. You can do that by right clicking and choosing on a project in Solution Explorer and choosing to deploy. It comes up with a wizard. The first stage of the wizard is just telling you what the other stages are. So what I'm going to do is click on next to go on to the next stage. It's validated my project. So what I can now do is type in the server name. In this instance, the full stop is showing the fact that the uh, SQL Server database is actually stored on my local machine. So that's just like typing in, typing in local host or the name of the machine. And this is actually the named instance within SQL Server. But the thing you type in there will be the name of your server. I can then click on the Browse button and it will come up with my catalog. And what I'm going to do is create a new folder within that to keep all these projects together. So I'm going to call this Tutorial. And I could type in a description if I wanted to. So you can see that's where it's going to deploy to. If I click on the next button, it will just review all my choices I've made. And then I can click on the deploy button and it will actually do the work. And you can see there it's deploying the project. And in a very short while, that's going to finish. I could save a report of how this deployment went, but I'm just going to close this down. And if I now have a look at SQL Server, initially it looks very disappointing. Nothing's changed. But that's because of Management Studio's refresh problem. If I right click on the catalog and choose to refresh it, you can see it's created my um, folder within that. If I click on that, you can see I've got two things within it. I've got a list of all the projects I've published. There's only one. And I've got something called environments, which are collections of parameters, which we'll look at later. And what I can do now is to expand my project, have a look at the packages, with it, packages within this, and run one or more of them, which is what we'll look at now. What I want to do now is look at two ways in which you can execute a package. The first and most obvious way is to right click on the name of the package, I'm going to do the one we've called parameters, and choose execute. And it will pop up the dialog box asking me to fill in any parameters. Well I haven't got any parameters, I will add some later in this tutorial. So I can just choose OK and it will run my package. And there is the results of it in the dialog box. While it's running the package, it asks the question, do you want to open an overview report? 
and if you choose yes, you get a quick summary report of how the package executed with all sorts of information. That will probably be enough for most people, but if it isn't, what you could do is right click on your package and choose to show some of the reports. You've got some standard reports, all the executions which have taken place and all the validations, and you can create custom reports as well. I'll just show you all the executions and you can see this report has been run six times so I must have been testing things in the background, shock horror. Um, and you can also see all sorts of other information about each of those executions. So that's the first way to run a package. The second way begins in the same way. You right click on the package and choose execute. But what you can do is write your own script. So I'm going to write script to a new query editor window. And what you can see SQL Server does is to create a script to run the package. And that's quite hard to read, so I'm just going to delete it and replace it with a version which does exactly the same thing but with a few lines and comments in. And you can see that what it's doing is running this store procedure called create underscore execution to line the package up. And then right at the bottom it actually starts the execution process. And for experienced SQL programmers there's enough information there to be able to write your own store procedures to run packages whenever you want them to, whenever you want to. The disadvantage of what we've done so far is that when I right click on a package and choose to execute it, I don't have an opportunity to vary what I'm seeing. So I'm always seeing the names of the people who came in the first three position, positions and whose names contain the letter B. I'd like to have a list of parameters here where I could vary that. So what I'll do is go back to integration services and add those parameters and get them to work. So a parameter is just like a variable but is supplied externally to the package. I could create my parameters by right clicking on my project parameters there, or rather double clicking on it, but what I'm going to do instead is add them within my package. And the reason to do it this way is because parameters that you add in your package will be able to be deployed. You can see I do that by clicking the parameters tab. I can then click on this little icon. If this looks faintly reminiscent of variables, that's because it is and works exactly the same way. So I'll call my first parameter max position, which is the same as the variable name is called. I don't need to do that, but that's just so I can remember uh, the names clearly. And I'll call my second one name contains. And that'll be a string variable. And I don't actually need to set any values for these because they'll be provided at runtime. What I can then do is delete my two variables because I no longer need those. And what I'll now need to do is go back to my package and I'll need to go into my initial S execute SQL statement task. I'll need to go into my expressions and change the SQL statement source. So instead of referring to a variable, it refers to a parameter. And that's easy to do because it says variables and parameters here. And in fact, they're listed in the same list. The only difference is parameters begin with a dollar sign. So what I'll do is get rid of my maximum position variable there and instead use my maximum position parameter and I'll get rid of my username contains variable there and I'll use my name contains parameter but otherwise nothing has changed. I'll click on evaluate expression just to check there's no syntax errors and then choose OK twice. What I now need to do is to deploy my package and indeed the whole project. There was no need to save it because at the time of deployment it will save everything and build it and it's saying a project with this name already exists, click name to replace it. I'm comfortable doing that on this occasion. So I'll deploy it, and what it will do is overwrite the previous project. So if I now go back to SQL Server, you can see my project package is still there and looks exactly the same. But when I right click on it to execute it, it's going to come up with request for the parameter information. I can now type in the maximum position, except actually I can't. I need to click on the three dots rather bizarrely and I'm going to choose the first five positions and for the name contains I'm going to go for the letter E which is quite common. So let's see what that produces. If I choose OK and run that I won't show a report and you can see I've got rather more, there's a lot more finalists who finished in the first five positions and whose name contained an E. So that's how you can create parameters. What I'll look at next is how you can bunch them together into something called environments. The last thing I'm going to show in this tutorial is how to use something called environments. 
What I'll do is first is show how they work and then show how to create them. I've created two environments. The first one is called Winners with an S. And what it will show, and I'll come back to this later in more detail, is all the people, or the finalists, whose name contains an S and who got the first position. The other environment I've created is called Anyone with an X. And what that will show is anyone who has an X in their name and who finished in the first three positions. All I'm doing here is trying to illustrate the idea of what you can do. If I then run a package, you can choose either one of those two things called environments, and what it will do is substitute the parameter value. So I'm going to choose winners with an S, and what that will do is show all the people who won who have an S in their name. If I run the package again, this time I'll choose anyone with an X, and this time I'll see all the people who've got an X in their name, whatever position they reached. So that's what environments are. The way you create them is extremely messy, I think, but if you get the steps in the correct order, not too bad. We're going to create a new environment, so what you can do is right-click on Environments and choose Create Environment. I'm going to call this environment uh, First Two Places with M and choose OK. What I can then do is double-click on it to edit it, try that one again, and assign variables. Now it's absolutely vital I use the same variable names as I have in the other two. So I chose name to be my first one, and that's a string variable. And for the second one I chose pos, and that's going to be an integer. And what I'm going to do is fill in values for that. So I'll put an m for name, and for the position I'll put in the number 2, so we'll get positions 1 and 2. One gotcha. The, na the uh, query string is case sensitive, so if I put a capital M, it's highly likely I wouldn't get anyone at all because there's not many finalists who've got a capital M in their name. So I'll choose OK to confirm that, and that's my third environment. What I now need to do is go to my package, right-click on it and configure it, and add a reference to the environment I've just created. So you can see I've already got two which I'm referencing. What I need to do is add in a third by clicking the Add button. I can choose my third one, which is first two places with an M, and choose OK, and it will add it to the list of environments I'm referencing. I can choose OK. The other thing I need to do with a package is, although I'm referencing the environment, and the environment has two variables called name and pos, I need to map those variables onto the parameters in my package. I did so as a messy. So I need to right click on my package and configure it, and for each of the two parameters, I need to click on the three dots to the right of it. I need to say I'm going to use the environment variable. And this is why it's so crucial I should use the same names because clearly I've, I've called the variable pos in one environment and something else in another, it won't work. And you can see I've already done this. I've assigned the parameter called max position to have the value of the variable called, or environment variable called pos, and I've assigned the parameter called name contains to take the value of the environment variable called name. The reason I've only got one item in each list is because SSIS is intelligent enough to realize that there's no point offering me up an integer variable for a string parameter and vice versa. So now I've done all that, I hope I can now execute my package. And when I do that, I could, if I liked, fill in values for my parameters here. But instead of doing that, what I can do is choose to create an environment, and I can say, well, I'll use the first two places with M. And what it will do is, as it shows here, is take the value of these two environment variables and substitute them in at runtime. So when I choose OK, I will see all of the people who finished in the first two places who have a little m in their name. So that's how you create environments. And that finishes this tutorial on deploying in SSIS and using parameters. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on deployment and parameters in SSIS. You can find loads more training resources on all things SQL Server, .NET, and Microsoft Office at www.wiseowl.co.uk.